So the other day, I was at university, sitting, doing my work, and I get a message from the NBA storyteller. He invited me, out of all people, to be part of a group. But the aim of this group was to provide one story, one NBA Finals moment, to help celebrate the NBA Finals. Yeah, I'm a little late, okay? I was going to do one video. The Ray Allen clutch shot moment. As a Heat fan, this was the greatest shot I've ever seen in my life. But two YouTubers have already done this, and because I was late to the party, I said, you know what, let me do something that no other YouTuber has done in this collaboration. But if you guys want to see the other YouTubers and what they've done, we were each asked to make a short video about our personal favorite moment from any finals, and this is mine. Well, I'll just pretend it's mine, because I'm not going to do a third video on the Ray Allen shot. So this is Michael Jordan. This is the Game 6 shot. Yeah, you probably know it, but do you know the whole story? It's June 14, 1998. The Bulls vs Jazz was a heated rivalry. They had already faced off in the NBA Championship the year before, with the Bulls winning the series ultimately, giving them a back-to-back -back NBA Championship. And this year, they were going for their three-peat. It's the shot that is simply known as the last shot. Everyone knows it. Whether or not this was a push-off that led to the iconic shot is widely debated. But 20 years later, 30 years later, 50 years later, and for the entire eternity, this will not matter. At the end of the day, the shot went in. And it counted. And it led Jordan to his sixth NBA championship. The Utah Jazz wanted revenge. They'd beaten the Bulls in the regular season more times than not, and they had home court advantage. This was their best chance after they lost to them last season in the NBA Championship. These guys wanted revenge. But let's rewind it to the 1998 entire playoffs. Utah won their first round matchup pretty easily, three games to two, but they beat an old Clyde Drexler and an old Houston Rockets team. Then they beat the Spurs in five. They beat the Lakers, they had made it to the NBA Championship without really breaking a sweat. They beat a young Kobe and a young Duncan, and they were in the NBA Championship. Whereas the Bulls had to face off against tougher opponents in the Eastern Conference. They had an aging Jordan, an aging Pippen, an aging Rodman. This was definitely going to be the last stretch for the Chicago Bulls. The Jazz won Game 1 in overtime by 3. In Game 2, the Bulls bounced back and won by 5. And let's just say that Game 3 was one that no Jazz fan will ever remember. They lost by 42 points, only scoring 54 points for the game. Stop it. Get some help. And they also lost in Game 4. So now the series is 3-1. But the Jazz bounce back and win Game 5. Every great drama has its subplots. Game 5 of the NBA Finals was no exception. The Jazz finally got a marquee performance from their star, Karl Malone. And the series is three games to two. Chicago leads. And now we go back to Utah for Game 6. The thing about the Bulls and the Jazz is that if it heads to Game 6 in Utah and the Jazz can get up, they stay in Utah. And they verse the Chicago Bulls, who have an injured Scottie Pippen and aging Michael Jordan, and who knows what happens next. The Bulls had to win this game, and it wasn't looking great for the Chicago Bulls. As they arrived at the Delta Center for Game 6, Scottie Pippen, whose back was already injured going into the game, injured his back once again in the opening play when he dunked the opening basket of the game. Watch Pippen come across the lane, and as he reaches up to dunk, he pulls his back out, and you see him grimace as he comes up the floor. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center, and early on, Scottie Pippen re-injured his back on that dunk shot that he had just at the beginning of the game. He has been in the locker room for the past five or six minutes trying to stretch that back out. He has both doctors in there. They're just trying to see what they can do to get him ready to play. And if anything else happens, I will be here to report it to you. He ended up scoring eight points the entire game. He tried to play defense. He tried to help Jordan. But in the end, he barely played. He played as many minutes as he could, going in and out of the locker room, but... In the end, it was Jordan versus the Jazz. Let's take a look at the box score. Jordan, 45 points. Pippen, 8. Pippen, 26 minutes. Jordan, 44. Yeah. Pippen's injury really derailed him this series. 
especially in this last game. This is the game 6, this is to win it all, and you have the Robin to Jordan's Batman injured, it's not a good sign. Not only do the Jazz have a chance to make history being the first team to come back 3 games to 1, they also have a chance to make history by being the only team to defeat the Chicago Bulls in the NBA Finals. You see, the Jazz weren't meant to be this good if they're down 3-1, but they were. They seriously had a chance to win games that could have gone either way, but ended up being in the Bulls' favour. But why? Well, Jerry Sloan, the head coach of the Utah Jazz, made a few changes when Karl Malone had his opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with his opponent. He basically scored every time. In the end, he's a Hall of Famer. He's a top two scorer in NBA history. When he has the ball, he's going to score. But the Bulls had a trap defense where they would double Karl Malone when he headed into the post. That's why they had this man, Antoine Carr. Antoine Carr wasn't a great player. He was a good player. He did his job and he played his role. But the one thing he could do was stretch the floor. When players would double Malone, you could kick it out to Antoine Carr and he would normally hit that shot. He wasn't your typical center. He wasn't just a finisher around the basket. He could stretch the floor, hit that mid-range, which meant that you couldn't double Malone because if you did, he would kick it out and they'd have two points. The director of Utah's cast, Jerry Sloan, made a script revision at intermission. He called on a seldom used veteran from Wichita State, a stand-in, Antoine Carr. Carr had five field goal attempts in the second half. He made them all. Without his performance in a supporting role, the NBA Finals would be history. See, what Antoine Carr gives you is a big man who can shoot. So if they're going to go down and double team, he can make the 15-foot shot. Keith can't foster his streaky, and neither can Ostertag. They've gone to a smaller lineup, and it's been effective. They're afraid to double team because everybody can shoot the ball now for Utah. they got to stay at home. So that's what they did, and it worked. The Utah Jazz hit shot after shot after shot, but so did the Bulls because in the end, they had Michael Jordan, who was the greatest player to ever live. The thing about Jordan was that he wasn't just the greatest player to ever live on the offensive end, he was also amazing on defense. Kornacek pegging it ahead to Russell, but Michael, with whatever gas is left in his tank, gets back to pick it off. Well, remember last year in game four, Stockton to Malone that won the game. The long pass over the fingertips of Michael Jordan. Stockton with a great pass, Michael just misses it, and Malone gets the layup really to seal the win. Well, moments ago, were we going to see the same thing here? A chance to go up four, Hornacek throws the pass, and Michael Jordan, with every ounce of energy that he has, goes up and gets the skill. After Jordan had made a layup to make it 85-86, the Bulls needed to stop the Jazz from scoring. And that's where we all know what happened next. With Antoine Carr in the game, Jordan had one option. Get the big man to double Carr Malone, or do it himself. He knew that if the big man did it, it would leave Carr open, and Carr was able to hit shots if he was left wide open. You can clearly see Malone, look around, waiting to see what would happen waiting to see if the big man would double him, as they did all game. Instead, no big man came, but Jordan crept out from behind him, stole the ball. Then came Byron Russell. Byron Russell was actually one of the Jazz's best defenders. Little did we know what would happen next. With 10 seconds remaining, Jordan started to dribble right. He then crossed over to his left. He hit the 20-footer to give the Jazz the lead with 5.2 seconds left. Then, the rest is history. The Jazz had one final chance, but Stockton missed, and that was it. Jordan gave the Bulls their sixth NBA championship. Pippen, who was injured for most of that game, had also won his sixth NBA championship, and the game-winning shot has been immortalized around the world, and it's known as one of the greatest finals moments. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, be sure to check out everybody's videos down below in the description box below in the playlist section. If you enjoyed this video and you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe, leave a like if you guys enjoyed, follow me on Instagram, and I'll catch you guys in my next video on the road to 250,000 subscribers. I am out. Peace.